the concept of alternative splicing an overview now with the first time that it was proposed that one gene gives rise to one enzyme and then that was modified to one gene gives rise to one polypeptide alternative splicing has enabled to uh, modify this concept further into one gene giving rise to several polypeptides so let us look at uh, the learning outcomes of this interesting concept so the possibility of getting more than one rna variant from a pre mrna or an hnrna is uh, by alternative splicing is what is a mechanism that is based on different regulations involving the splicing mechanism pre mrna all of us know is a mosaic of coding and non coding regions that is exons and introns but hnrna is a heteronuclear rna which can contain say for example a single transcript having a rrna it can also have a trna and along with trna it can have a mrna or it can have just simply a ribosomal rna and an mrna or it can have a trna and an mrna so the combinations can be varied but when you have more than one rna present in a transcript then that is what is called as hnrna and it is through splicing that these different rna can be separated the concept of one gene one polypeptide is now of course extended to one gene several related polypeptides there are about four to five different ways by which alternative splicing can take place and this process enables the transcript term size to be greater than the genome so if the genome has say for example 25000 genes and because one gene can give rise to several uh, uh, rna variants so therefore you may have instead of 25000 genes say for example 50000 primary trans uh, sorry 50000 rna which means that the size of the transcriptome is double the size of the uh, Uh, genome if you consider that every gene present in the genome is able to give rise to two rna variants so that is just a supposition but the idea of getting more rna variants from a single genome definitely leads to a greater or a larger transcriptome size compared to the genome size now let us look at what to be really understand by alternative splicing so when you have a primary transcript which is a mosaic of coding regions these are the exons exon 1 2 3 and 4 and you have intron 1 2 and 3 uh suppose this is spliced normally then what you have is all the exons 1 2 3 and 4 joined together through phosphodiester linkages after the transesterification reactions so in this transcript which is a functional mrna you have all the introns spliced out this is what is generally what is considered as normal splicing mechanism but what is also possible is that along with the introns you may have the fourth exon being also spliced out in such a case what will remain as an rna is exon 1 2 and 3 joined together but the exon 4 is missing so therefore this becomes a different rna from this rna and hence the product which is the protein that you will get will also be different similarly what can also happen is that instead of an intron being spliced out say for example this intron instead of this intron being spliced out it is retained and plus you have another intron with the exon removed so now say for example you have exon 1 exon 3 exon 4 and intron 1 then again what is observed here is that one of the exons is skipped or one of the exons is spliced out but one of the introns which needed to be spliced out has been retained thus giving rise to another rna variant similarly over here two exons are retained and one intron is remain so this is another variant of the same transcript so which means that you are going to get n number of possibilities of getting different rna variants depending on where the spliceosome machinery is able to bind and carry out splicing so alternative splicing basically is such where you can have introns removed and exons can also be skipped or you can have introns retained and exons skipped as well 
Now, to look at this, let us look at an example. So, for example, you have the primary RNA transcript of troponin T. Troponin is a molecule that is uh, associated with muscles, especially with skeletal muscles, and uh, uh, has a role to play in uh, muscle contraction. Now, this primary RNA transcript has been observed to be spliced out in two ways. So, it is what is showing alternative splicing. If you had all the introns removed and you would have exon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 coming together, then it would have been normal splicing. But what has been observed for the troponin is that one splicing mechanism leads to exon 4 also being spliced out. So, you have what is called as exon 4 being skipped and the other alternative splicing mechanism leads to the exon 4 being retained but the exon 3 being skipped. So, what you observe in these two transcripts is all the introns are removed like mentioned over here but what is going to happen is that one or the other exon is being skipped and therefore the protein that you will get from here is going to be different from the protein that you are going to be here although they may be isoforms. So, when you talk about isoforms, it means that you are looking at the fact that both these polypeptides are responsible for carrying out a function in muscle contraction or being associated with muscles, but their functionalities are still different from each other. Now, when you are looking at different ways of alternative splicing, there are five different ways. Suppose you have the gene with exon 1, intron 1, exon 2, intron 3 and exon 3 and this gives rise to an RNA that has exon 1, 2, 3 with the two introns. A normal mechanism is when intron 1 and intron 2 are completely spliced out to have exon 1, 2 and 3 uh, linked to each other or joined to each other through ester bonds. This is what is called as normal splicing. So, this is one of the ways of splicing. Suppose you have exon 2 being skipped out, okay, then you would have only exon 1 and 3 uh, forming an ester bond with each other. So, therefore, this is the second way of alternative splicing where an exon has been skipped. So, exon skipping is one of the mechanisms. Now, suppose for example, this intron has a splice site here, but then say for example, it has a similar sequence within the intron. So, there are two donor sites or consider that there are two 5 prime splice sites within this intron itself. So, the splices of machinery may recognize one of the uh, donor sites and thereby what can happen is a portion of this intron is not spliced out and it remains with exon 1. Since such a scenario, what is, up, what is the mechanism is what is called as exon extension. Then you have say for example an entire intron being retained. So, you have 1, 2 and 3 exon present in the transcript but along with it you have intron 1 also retained and that is what is called as intron retention. Now, you have another way by which one can either be present with 2 or one can be either present with 3. So, you have both these possibilities happening from this uh, transcript. So, such uh, a process is what is called as formation of alternate exons. Now, let us just look at all of this uh, again by looking at how the splicing has probably happened. So, consider this as the RNA transcript. In a normal splicing, you will find that this entire intron is recognized such that the, its 5 prime splice site and 3 prime splice site both are recognized. Same for intron 2, its 5 prime splice site and 3 prime splice site are all recognized along with its branch point. And so the entire intron 1 and 2 is going to be spliced out, leaving 1, 2 and 3 exon linked to each other. This is normal splicing. Now, see for example, the same transcript. You have, instead of the splicing machinery recognizing the 3 prime end of intron 1 and recognizing the 5 prime end of intron 2, what is happening is the 5 prime end of intron 1 is being recognized by the cell spliceosome machinery and the 3 prime end of exon, uh, intron 2 is being recognized. Now, therefore, in the process what happens is an exon 2 which is present between intron 1 and 2 
is also spliced out because this entire portion is going to be now spliced out leaving exon 1 and 3 linked to each other. So this is what is called as exon skipping. Now let's say for example like I mentioned if this intron has a 5 prime splice site here right at its 5 prime end but it has a similar conserved sequence present within this intron then the spliceosome machinery can recognize this as the donor site or the 5 prime splice site rather than this. So therefore you would have the uh, a SNRP coming and binding to within the intron one but not at the end of the 5 prime uh, intron, uh, 5 prime end of the intron. So thereby you would have portion of the intron being re removed and of course the entire two would be removed. So now what remains is exon 1 with an extension of intron 1. Therefore this is what is called as exon extension. Now let's look at another mechanism. In this suppose the splicing happens only for in intron 2. Then what will remain is intron 1 as well because the spliceosome machinery has not even touched the 5 prime and the 3 prime splice site of intron 1 and therefore the intron 1 will remain with the exons to form this variant. Now let us look at for example you have intron 1 and uh, you have intron 2 and exon 3 being removed then this is one exclusive alternative splicing but you can also have Intron 1 with 2 getting spliced out and you may have intron 1 and exon 1 and 2 also being spliced out. So what are the options? You can have 1 with 2, 1 with 3 or 2 with 3. So you have what is called as mutually exclusive exons being removed. So you will always have one exon being removed in this case. Okay. So this is the way by which mutually exclusive exons are spliced out. Now, alternator splicing is a regulated mechanism. What regulates alternator splicing? So, in eukaryotes, many style studies have revealed the presence of what is called as activators and the presence of what is called as repressors. Both activators and repressors are mostly proteins and these proteins can bind to the DNA at specific sites to regulate alternator splicing. So the activators are known to be associating with exonic splicing enhancers or intronic splicing enhancers. Enhancers are cis elements that is they are DNA sequences that are present either in the exon region or they are present in the intron region. But when the activator binds to this enhancers then the binding of the activator to enhancer may position the spliceosome machinery dependent on where the enhancer is present. One of the examples of such an activator which we have already discussed earlier is what is called as SR proteins. These SR proteins are known to regulate normal splicing but they are also known to regulate alternative splicing. Now interestingly the SR proteins have several domains of which one of the uh, two of the common domains that help in alternative splicing are RNA uh, um, um, associated motif and uh, arginine and serine domains. That means you have domains where you have a conserved arginine and serine. So what is say for example observed is that the RS domains have been reported to bind to uh, the um, splicing machinery. And the RS domains are mainly present at the C-terminal domain of the SR proteins. So this uh, domain present in the C-terminal domain mediates interaction with the splicing machinery to recruit the splicing machinery to specific splice sites. So that is how they function. Now repressors also are known to bind to specific cis elements. They are called as silencers. So they can either be exonic splicing silencers which means these sequences are present in exons or they can be intronic splicing silencers. These silencers are or sequences are present in the introns. Most silencers are recognized by a family of proteins which are called as heteronuclear ribonucleoproteins and they may actually bind so one of the HNRNPs can come and bind to one of the enhancer elements 
and having bound to one of the enhancer elements, several of these HNRNPs then will come and surround this enhancer. So what happens is when the enhancer is bound to by the HNRNP, the activators cannot come and bind to enhancers to allow splicing to happen. So therefore, what is happening is that the HNRNP represses splicing by binding to an enhancer region. Or it can bind to a silencer, but once it binds to the silencer, several of the HNRNP can come and bind to the silencer, also hiding the enhancer regions. Mammalian HNRNP, HNRNP1, is reported to bind to pyrimidine tract, which then prevents binding of U2AF, which is one of the proteins of the splicing machinery. So you can already see that. Now let us just look at a few proposed regulatory models of alternative splicing. So say for example, you have cell type 1 and cell type 2. And these are the primary transcripts uh, where you have uh, the splicing site along with a repressor site. So this is what is called as the silencer region. Now, suppose say for example, the splicing machinery uh, in the absence of repressor site can come and bind to the splice site and it will carry out the splicing of mRNA. So the absence of repressor has ensured that the splicing machinery comes and binds to the splicing site and carries out the splicing. But when say for example in cell type 2, the repressor is getting expressed. So the presence of the repressor will ensure that the repressor goes and binds to the silencer and when you have the repressor bound at the silencer region, it is now blocking the uh, splice site from being bound to by the spliceosome machinery. So in such a case, what is going to happen is that the transcript will remain unspliced. So therefore, this becomes a variant from this, thanks to the presence of repressor, which means the repressor has regulated whether this particular portion is intron is to be retained or not thanks to the presence of the repressor site. Now, this silencer is part of the intron itself, say for example. Then this is what is called as an intronic splicing silencer. Now, let's look at uh, the example of HNR RNP1, which is a mammalian HNRNP1. See, these are the two exons with the intron present over here. So, one of the mechanism by which it can function is it comes and binds to the uh, uh, three prime end of exon 1 and the five prime end of exon 2. When it does so, these two can come and bind to each other and thereby point out or uh, basically make the five prime splice site and the three prime splice site of this, this intron not available for binding to the spliceosome machinery. So effectively, it is by binding to the exon splicing enhancer or exon splicing silencer, it is ensuring that this intron is not being spliced up. What can also happen is that HNRNP1 can show cooperative binding and you can have the entire intron being bound to by the HNRNP1, thereby not enabling the splicing mechanism to bind to this intron at all and hence this intron is going to get retained. So, basically, there is one more thing that has been proposed with respect to alternative splicing and that is alternative splicing is considered to um, regulate expression of a gene, whether it has to be switched off or whether it has to be switched on. Say, for example, this is the RNA transcript. Now, say, for example, exon 2 within its uh, sequence has a stop codon right over here. So, if this exon is present in the transcript, okay, then what is going to happen is when translation begins from this point, translation will come to this point and stop. So you would have a protein form that gets truncated. No further protein is being formed beyond this point because this exon has the stop codon. So effectively, the stop codon being present on this exon 2 is switching off the expression of this entire transcript. But however, if the splicing of intron 1 and 2 happens, then you don't have 1 and 2 present, but say you have 2 and 3. In such a scenario, what is going to happen is 1, 2 and 3 are going to be translated 
to form a polypeptide which has a specific function. So you can see this polypeptide is different. We do not know whether it has a role or not, but it's a truncated protein and expression of this has been stopped. But in this case, because the stop codon is not present, why is the stop codon not present? Because exon 2 is not present, it has been skipped. And because of that, the entire protein is formed. So therefore, that is another way by which alternative splicing regulates. You can also have the activators functioning. So for example, let's consider that within exon 2, you have the splicing enhancer. So this is called as exonic splicing enhancer sequence. And you have the splice site present over here. Now, in such a scenario where you have a cell type in which the activator is not present, okay, then despite there being the presence of the spliceosome machinery, it is not able to position itself into the splice site because the activator is absent. Consider that the activator is present. So the activator binds to the enhancer region and positions the spliceosome correctly on the splice site, thereby ensuring that the splicing happens and you have got the exon 1 and exon 2 linked together through the phosphodiester bond. So here the absence of activator does not allow splicing, where here the presence of the activator has allowed the splicing. So say for example, this is the SR protein, then its RS domain or the C terminal domain can position the spliceosome machinery right on the splice site, thereby ensuring that splicing happens. Thus, let us make, us the, make the conclusions. The regulated binding of spliceosome machinery to different splice sites can lead to different splicing ways, leading to getting more than one RNA from a gene and several isoforms of the protein. There are five different ways of alternating splicing, normal splicing, skipping of exons, retention of introns, alternate donor and acceptor splice sites to lead to extended exons, mutually exclusive exon splicing. Alternative splicing is regulated by activators and repressors that in turn can bind to enhancers and silencers which are cis elements present in the RNA itself, either in the exon or in the introns. Alternative splicing, apart from increasing the transcriptome, also enables switching gene expression on and off in many systems. Thus, alternative splicing is an important phenomenon in maximizing the use of a single gene to produce several RNA, which in turn can form different polypeptides, which may be related in its function or may not be related. Thank you.